Can you square something to get a negative number? Yes. Ooh, you guys are getting fancy. Some of you guys know. Uh, now, I, I should have asked my question a better way. Can you square a real number to get a negative number? No. And the answer is no. Okay. Is there something you can square to get a negative number? Yes, there is. Okay. So, uh, let's... Um, Let's take a look here at what I represents. What is I? We're going to say I. Well, not just we are going to say. This is true. I represents the square root of negative 1. Now, that's weird because that's saying that we can square something and you'll get a negative number. Okay? And actually, what it, what it is, what you can square is the I. We can square an I and we would get a negative 1. Because I represents the square root of negative 1. And when we square that, the square root and the squared, they cancel out because they're opposites. They're inverses of each other. Are you guys with me? Okay, so this equals negative 1. I squared equals negative 1. Okay, and so that's the beginning. Now, I only have to do this uh, two or three more times for you guys to start noticing a pattern. Are you guys ready? Uh, yeah, ready. Okay, here we go. I did a third. Now... Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate I to the third a little bit to help us see that how it can simplify. I to the third can be written as I squared times I. Now, it's I to the one, but one is a ninja. You can't see him. If I were to multiply these two, you would add these uh, exponents together and you would get three, correct? Yeah. So what I'm saying uh, in that uh, this equals this, it's true. Everybody's in agreement. Okay, but now we know something about I squared. What does I squared equal? Negative one. Equals negative one. So I can rewrite this to say negative one times I. And so I can simplify that to negative I. And so in simplifying, I could say that I to the third equals negative I. Just like I squared equals negative one. Is everybody still with me? Okay, one more. And this one's my favorite. Okay, here he is. I to the fourth power. Like before, I'm going to manipulate it a little bit. I'm going to say I to the fourth is the same as I squared times I squared. Now, do you guys remember what I squared equals? Negative, negative, one. One. negative one. Negative one times negative one equals? One. one. Ooh, now. Oh, let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, let's go. <laughs> I like that excitement. That wasn't excitement. I was just trying to make funny. Okay, so how about I to the fifth? And this is where you, you should start noticing something. Okay, I did a fifth. Now, I can rewrite I did a fifth different ways. Uh, but there's one way that makes it the easiest. Okay, um, talk to your neighbor. See if you can see how everybody else can split up the I did a fifth. Go. Okay, there's a lot of different ways to do this. <clears throat> and none of them are wrong. But you probably will choose one of them as the easiest. Okay, I'm going to do this one first. I squared, I squared times I. Uh, here's another one. Um, I squared times I to the third. Uh, here's another one. I to the fourth times I. Now, one of these, I would say, is the easiest. <clears throat> but let's go down some of these trails here. I squared times I squared. That would be negative one times negative one times I. What is negative one times negative one? Ooh, now. So now we have Ooh, now. times I. So we just get I. What is um, I squared again equal? Negative. That's negative one. What is I to the third equal? Negative one. Negative I. So we have negative one times negative I. Oh, snap. What is that equal? I. I. Oh, snap. It's the same thing as the, what we did before. And then we have the last one. We have I to the fourth times I. What is I to the fourth oh, equal? That's one. And then we have I. Now, which one's your favorite? I to the fourth. Okay. See? See what I'm saying? Everybody, become, like this guy right here, becomes everybody's favorite. And if you make him your favorite, you can probably simplify um, I's a lot faster. Okay? Whenever you guys simplify I's, you're going to get one of these answers. You're going to get I. You're going to get negative one, negative I, or one. There's only four answers for simplifying i. So if you ever see i with an exponent, you can simplify it to one of these. Okay, so let me give you guys a, a, a practice problem. Okay, you guys ready for this? 
Y'all ready for this? All right, go for it. Maybe I picked too big of a number for you guys to start out, but uh, some of you guys did think of it. You thought, is 92 a multiple of four? And maybe you divided it like I'm doing right now. Maybe you did it in your head. You went, oh, four goes in the nine twice. And then you got uh, one left over and you bring down the two and you got 12. And you know four goes into 12 three times. So you know that you can write I to the fourth 23 times. Wait, why four? Why four? Because he's my favorite. He equals one. Now you could have chose I to the three. You could have chose I squared. I'm not going to stop you if you want to do that. But I to the fourth, he's the best because he equals one. You see, if you have negative one times negative one times negative one times negative one times negative one, what's the answer? Is it positive one or negative one? Negative <laughs> one. I don't know, because I didn't count how many negative ones I said. But, but when you just have one, it doesn't matter how many you have. It's always going to equal uno. So if I wrote I did a fourth times 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 I did a fourth 23 times, that'd just be a bunch of ones multiplying to each other, right? Yeah, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> okay, so let me give you guys a more simple one. Are you ready? How about this one? I to the 15th power. Simplify that one. Go. Tell your neighbors. Now, there's many ways to split up this I to the 15. I'm going to do it a way that you might have tried. And then I'm going to do it what I think is the easiest way to do it. Okay, so uh, let's see. You could say... I to the fifth times I to the fifth times I to the fifth. Now, in order to do that one, though, you have to know what I to the fifth is. So what does I to the fifth simplify to? Hey, we know that. It simplifies the I. So this is really just saying I times I times I. Do you guys know what I times I is? Yes. That's the same as I squared. You guys know what I squared is, right? Negative. Oh, now. So what's our answer? Negative I. Negative I. Okay, now let me show you guys the way I probably would have done it. Okay, I would have split up the 15 to be I to the 12th times I to the third. Now, why would I choose I to the 12th? <clears throat> because I can rewrite that as I to the fourth raised to the third power. And I to the fourth is. Oh, no. And so you have one raised to the third power, which is just. Oh, no. And now I have I to the third. And what, what is I to the third? Negative uno. Oh, I'm sorry. Not uno. All right. Sorry. I just wanted to say uno again. So two different ways to get it. I would always use four first. I would just divide by four and see what the remainder is. That's, my, that's what I would do. Okay. Can you do it a different way? Yes. Whatever floats your boat, yo.